Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a look at the latest on Storm Babbitt which is giving severe rainfall for many areas of northern England and Scotland. We've seen multiple amber warnings issued today and we saw of course the red uh, danger to life warning that has expired earlier today. However, that is not the end of Storm Baba. As I have said over the last few days, we were likely to see upgrades to those warnings. As we head into Saturday, we've still got AMB warnings that do last from today into tomorrow. But we also have a new AMB warning for Scotland. And we actually do have another red danger to life warning issued for eastern parts of Scotland. The same areas that saw red warning earlier today. I've got another one for the full 24 hours of Saturday so starting in about three hours after the recording of this video because if you look out to our east out towards northern Europe towards Denmark this mass of rain is heading from the east our way and it's going to continue to give extremely heavy rainfall in many areas so we'll run through the latest from the live radar as Storm Babbitt is continuing to smash our shores. We'll have a look at the latest UKV and, of course, the latest weather warnings. Looking at that latest red warning as we, again, are likely to see another few hundreds of millimetres of rainfall. And, of course, in the second half of the video, we will touch on the longer range as, unfortunately, it's not looking particularly great. Not going to be this severe in terms of rainfall, but the unsettled spell of weather is looking likely to continue into next week. So I do think we will probably see more yellows and maybe even still some more amber warnings for rain next week as we see more tame but still significant weather fronts moving in. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see we've still got lots of heavy rain around. And you can see the rainfall rates aren't ridiculous. They're mostly dark greens with a few specks of yellows, which in any ordinary circumstances we'd say is heavy rain, but nothing out of the ordinary. However, it's the fact that this rainfall has been falling across eastern Scotland and northern England now for about 12 to 24 hours. 24 hours for Scotland, more around the 12-hour range to 18-hour range for England and Wales here. So the rainfall amounts are totting up. And the, the problem is it's not just localised areas. It's widespread, giving not only the risk of flash flooding, but also the risk of widespread river flooding as we see all this rainfall falling all accumulating into the small streams that then filter on into the larger rivers and that's where we see significant flooding and I've seen reports again I'm no expert on river levels and exactly how uh, that uh, how the environmental agency does record it but I have heard reports today that they're expecting certain rivers to rise by up to five meters uh, again probably only for you know a period of a day or two but nevertheless, extreme amounts of water has fallen. It's all collecting into the rivers and into specific areas, giving significant flooding that I only think we'll see the peak of over this weekend. By probably Monday time, we've seen the worst of it, but I still think we've still got a lot more to come, especially with that red warning for eastern Scotland through tomorrow. Now, as I said, if we start on the live radar, lots of heavy rain around. The heaviest rain at the moment is across parts of northern England and parts of the North Midlands, where it has been raining all day. We'll look at the latest 24-hour precipitation totals. And across Scotland, we're seeing less in terms of persistent rainfall. It's broken up a bit, but still lots of hefty showers now moving in. So more on and off rain, but it's not stopped. And you can even see a bit of snowfall over the highest ground. as We are seeing, uh, seeing some cold air wrapping on the northern edge of this weather front, which is actually fueling it, that temperature contrast. Now you can see this is just the general area of Storm Babbitt which is battering much of northern and western Europe um, and as I said if we start by putting the temperatures on you can see the cold air filtering into Scotland and it's that weather front between the divisions of those two air masses that is giving all this rainfall and if we do have a look at the past 24 hour precipitation amounts again these are radar estimates you can see the reduction ridiculous amount of rainfall that has fallen in the past 24 hours now i emphasize the past 24 hours because many areas for example in scotland here have seen double this amount of rainfall but with that rainfall falling yesterday 
in the previous 24-hour period. So in the past 72-hour period, this amount across eastern Scotland where we see the red warning uh, would be probably into the purples um, here, which is showing hundreds of millimetres. But through today, the heaviest rainfall has been really across the North Midlands and Northern England. We've seen yellows, dark oranges and reds. That's indicating uh, precipitation amounts of up to 100 millimetres or more. And again, you can see where the weather front stalled just to the south of Leicester, Peterborough, Cambridge. It goes to the greens, indicating a few tens of millimetres. But you can see the huge drop or the huge jump up in precipitation totals um, here. And that's where the weather front stalled. Um, this is probably the most widespread heavy rain I've ever seen in the UK, or heavy rain uh, accumulations, where we've just seen this amount of yellows and oranges from this chart. We've seen higher in regional uh, regional uh, storms and regional areas, but this is the most widespread heavy rain I've seen in many years of looking at the live radar. A ridiculous amount of rainfall has fallen from Storm Babbitt so far, and I said there is more to come. Now, if you do look at the latest weather warnings, you can see the widespread warnings. Have a look at that latest uh, precipitation totals. Uh, uh, the AB warning probably should have been further, uh, further, um, or more widespread here, and maybe even a localised red warning, uh, again, on those impacts. But as I said, some of these warnings are expiring through this evening, and if we do st start with sort of the widespread blank yellow warnings before getting into the more severe warnings, you can see we've got this widespread yellow warning issue for much of northern England, Wales, and eastern England, and it expires at 6 a.m., so in about nine hours' time, as, it's uh, as the heavy rain that we have just seen on the live radar is starting to lose its oomph, and it's going to sort of degrade away over the coming hours. We've got a widespread yellow rain warning issued for eastern Scotland here. That does expire tomorrow at midnight, so it goes all the way into tomorrow. And again, that's all for that heavy rain we saw out in the North Sea heading our way. If you look, we've got yellow wind warnings. This is down the full east coast and for parts of northwest England here. And again, expires at midday tomorrow. Strong easterly winds are expected. Again, no ab warning issue for this, but again, 50 to 60 miles per hour, maybe as much as 60 or 70 miles per hour, exacerbating the impacts of that rainfall. If you look at the smaller ab warning that is issued across parts of southern Scotland. It's actually connected here to this other amber warning. They must have connected that today. Um, and you can see uh, that again, 40 to 60 millimetres widely, and much as 80 to 100 millimetres. And from the looks of the latest precipitation radar, I think we've seen more than that in the past 24 hours. And of course, in the past 40 hours, uh, a few, uh, maybe another inch or two on top of that. So severe amounts of rainfall, but luckily, especially for the England area and the Wales area of these weather warnings, it should be dying out through tonight into tomorrow morning, but still significant impacts as all that water filters down into the rivers and the valleys. That's it, expires at 6am tomorrow. But into tomorrow, we do have another red and amber warnings issued for Scotland. Now you can see... No real updates to the other warnings. Said so most of these England warnings do expire. I actually wish we could actually put a bit of a um, a time filter on this, uh, so we could get these warnings out of the way. It does, does clutter up the map a bit. But by tomorrow afternoon, things should be much clearer, as we see in the UK v in a minute. And then the focus returns back to Scotland. Now we've got these two amber warnings that have been issued. This first one for northern or the far north of Scotland for the full 24 hour period of tomorrow. And again, further spells of heavy rain expected to lead to further flooding. And again, we're looking at 40 to 6 millimetres widely in the 12 to 24 hour period with 80 to 100 millimetres and strong easterly winds accompanying that. And again, I'll emphasise that is just in the 12 to 24 hour period of this amber warning. The previous 48 to 72 hours, we've seen double, triple that amount of rainfall fallen already, just exacerbating the impacts. Another amber warning issued for Eastern Scotland, which does contain that red warning. And again, for the full 24 hours of tomorrow, 30 to 50 millimeters widely, 70 to 100 millimeters. Again, if you want to read the detail, do head over to the Met Office website. Again, very high impact and increasing likelihood. And then the red warning issued in near enough the same area as it was today or last night into today. Again, for the full 24-hour period of tomorrow, further very heavy rainfall expected to lead to 
further severe flooding, we're looking at accumulations of 70 to 100 millimetres in 18 to 24 hours. Less rainfall over coastal areas, highest over the hills, but impacts from the higher rainfall further west will extend towards the coast, i.e. all that rain falling over the hills and the mountains will filter into the streams, will filter into the larger rivers, and eventually filter all towards those coastal areas. And when the rivers are rising by multiple metres, it is going to cause flooding and I know there are, these areas are generally well prepared for flooding events um, as this is Scotland we do see a lot of rain in this region and there is generally at least a few times of year risk of floodings they have got flood de defenses but I don't think um, many areas will be able to cope with this amount of rainfall already we're seeing severe impacts through today and that's likely to be exacerbated with another red warning issued tomorrow luckily Sunday Look at that, a fresh slate. No warnings issued. Perhaps, as we'll see in the latest UK in a minute, there could be maybe more yellow warnings issued just for lighter rainfall that wouldn't normally cause any issues, but on top of the rainfall we've seen already. So I said, if we start on the latest UKV, you can see through this afternoon that rain across northern England has been very heavy, will peter out through this evening, and there'll be a few hefty showers left around in tomorrow morning. And then the rainfall really picks up for eastern Scotland. It's just relentless through the afternoon, probably peaking in intensity around the early afternoon before slowly pulling away. It is looking likely, although the red warning and the amber warnings extend to midnight, the rainfall should die out into the early evening but it, those impacts are still there as that rainfall as I said filters down and you see into tomorrow evening things looking brighter most areas are relatively dry with a few odd showers as I said into Sunday could see warnings reintroduced maybe actually into Monday as this weather front arrives again we wouldn't expect warnings normally but with the amount of rainfall that's fallen already there could be more issues from this heavier rainfall rates but it's looking good that Sunday is looking like a relatively dry day. And of course, that would be the day where we get the full picture of the impacts of Storm Babbitt. And then as we head into Monday, more heavy rain arrives, uh, more for southern and eastern England here, but rising up the east coast. And again, wouldn't be surprised to see another yellow or amp warning issued for that rainfall again. Likely seeing only maybe 10 or 20 millimetres, which is really nothing compared to what we've seen over the past few days. But it's been 10 times that but again, could exacerbate issues. And then finally into the middle of the week, look at that, another area of rain moving in. So as I said, impacts, uh, rainfall amounts into next week are going to be nowhere near as severe, but there is still the possibility of severe impacts than we would normally get and for those weather warnings to be issued simply because of how sodden and how, uh, how sodden the ground is and how high the river levels will be. Now, if you look at the max temperatures, again, you can see through this evening, quite cold for Scotland, where we have got some snowfall falling in places as we have got that cold air wrapping in. Tomorrow, actually, going to be quite cold in the north, mid to high single digits at best, maybe 15, 16 degrees in the southeast. We've still got some warmth associated with the core of Storm Babbitt. Into Sunday, we're all into a relatively fresh air mass, mid to low teens at best for many, and then maybe a couple of degrees either side of that. And then finally into Monday, could be a bit of a frost for northern England and Scotland, and Monday afternoon looking generally average again, low teens to maybe mid teens at best. And then Tuesday, again, very similar, low teens to mid teens, and that's probably the same into Wednesday again, so pretty consistent in terms of those temperatures. And that is looking likely to be the sort of status quo over the next week or so. Now, if you look at the latest GFS, you can see those very strong easterly winds associated with the general area of low pressure of Storm Babbitt. They will get cut off as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Those winds falling much lighter and things will look a lot better. As we progress into early next week, still lots of low pressure moving in. Nowhere near as severe, but still could be gusty, still could be heavy rain at times. And to the extent of range, we actually could see more severe impacts returning. Just keep your eye out across Scandinavia and Greenland. We've got a bit of a blocking area of high pressure developing, and it actually makes more of an inroad in in towards 384 hours. Again, not producing anything cold or anything drastic, but actually does settle us down a little bit. But it is something to watch. Again, we're still in October. This gets out to early November, so there's no chance of anything particularly cold developing. But there is the risk, if these sort of patterns do continue, there'll be something to 
to keep a very close eye on in probably about three or four weeks' time as we do get to the second half of November. If some blocking patterns like that persist, persist then I wouldn't be surprised if we did start to see a few colder runs appearing simply because of that block. Will uh, will inevitably develop some cold easterly winds on some extended range runs. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. GM, uh, if you compare that, again, very strong easterly winds at the moment. Low pressure continues to dominate and it's looking very unsettled all the way to day 10. And again, more of that little blocking area of high pressure to our north. Again, not producing anything cold. It actually could trap another low and do something very similar to what Storm Babbitt did. Um, so that wouldn't be great at all. And if we actually go back to the to GFS, if we do put on the precipitation accumulation to collapse, still lots of rainfall to fall, unfortunately. And that is from this, uh, from, uh, this is from the six hour mark of this run onwards. So that doesn't include the amount of rainfall that's fallen in the last couple of days. If we finish on the ECMWF, again, very strong easterly winds arriving with Storm Babbitt. Continues to look very unsettled. And by day 10, we've got a bit of a ridge of high pressure, but more low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. And if we look at the accumulated precipitation, again, lots of rainfall. Just look at this wall of purple and dark blue in off the Atlantic, showing you exactly where the jet stream is positioned. Now, if you finish by having a look at the latest ensembles, you see all the way up to early November, we're generally around average in terms of the upper air temperatures, slightly above and slightly below at times. But look at the precipitation. It's looking reasonably high for the foreseeable future. Again, nothing absolutely ridiculous and out of this world, but relatively high amounts, and it could, again, could warrant more further warnings in the coming days and weeks. The latest ECMWF, very similar around average, uh, the upper air temperatures, and lots more rainfall again. Slightly better in the next couple of days. Still some rain around from Saturday afternoon into Sunday, but it should start to alleviate those impacts. As I said, from Saturday night, things are looking a lot drier. So perhaps only 24 hours more of heavier rain, but regardless, it could still be very impactful. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you are in any of those warnings tonight or tomorrow, please do stay safe. I know things... You may look out your window and think it's just a bit of rain. It's nothing too severe at this stage. Things can change very, very quickly. And especially if you are in a floodplain or near uh, rivers that are prone to overflowing, there is a very high chance that that does happen with this event. And even areas where you don't expect flooding, this is historic amounts of rainfall, um, not only in small areas, but so widespread that even areas that are not prone to flooding could see issues. So please do stay safe out there over the next day or so. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.